Are you coming, Carl? Yes, sir. You shut the door? It's a Carl. Look at his hat. We have to see your hat. He's coming from the land of electricity. There he is! Hello. How do you like his hat? You're not showing the hat. There. He's starting to look prettier now. Okay, now go the other side and show the tip. <laughs> the tip of the hat, there. Do you think we should put like a, find a metal thing to put on that? There's a question as to whether there should be a tip. Let's see, okay, I'm gonna turn the camera around here. It's a little slow because it's cold. And there. What, how much did you say the temperature was today, Carl? Four? According to the cell phone, it's minus four, but I believe mm. it's colder. There. Minus four. But look, we're in the village. <laughs> Yes, to put on the tip. See, they, they should put a tip on there. There's like some sort of like a, an embossed metal tip or something, engraved tip or something that you can put on there. You need a tip on your hat. Look, it's cold. That's a small one though. That could be dangerous if he turns too fast. <laughs> I think so. Should we catch up on chat here while we show? So we have a plan today. I have to feed the animals. So we'll do that at the same time. Maria's here. She's logging in early because she has an evening shift at work and we've been on lunch break at, our lunch break begins at six. So she's ready, yay. And Garcia's here. There's six degrees in Holland, so they're a little bit warmer. And sunny too, apparently. Uh, Lear has got uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit in Kansas and windy. TB! Ah, oh, welcome! Uh, good morning, it's cool, and we just had some rain here in Arkansas. Uh, Susan Young, many in Adirondacks. I like saying Adirondacks. It's four degrees, so she's in the plus scale for us. Karen Burvis, Karen Burvis here, hello! And Kiwi from Bergen. Yeah, it has been a while, but I'm so glad to see you guys. And Heidi Lisa is here. Runa's not playing with us today, sorry. <laughs> no, he's the reason we're feeding the animals today. He has the day off. Arlene's here from San, uh, Man Manitoba. She's also, she's the same exact temperature as we do, minus four Celsius. Uh, but yep, it's starting to melt a little bit. You can see the snow on the ground is gone. And what we do have is like kind of icy. I just realized I'm in the uh, forbidden zone for internet. For some reason, the connection's always crappy right by those yellow doors. So we'll move away. More icicles. Bicycles. <laughs> They're not very long though. They can get really long and really thick. Yep, there's an innuendo in there somewhere. Waterfall still frozen, but you, if you look there, you can see the deep blue ice. And I'll catch up more on chat now that we're away from the icky spot. I like the hat. It looks nice. You look so new now. I have to, to, so Okay, so the picture I put on the front, I don't know if you saw it. Caption that. <laughs> I saw at least four holes I have to fix. <laughs> oh, uh, Greg says uh, he just noticed the time. He's working on a saddle and it's okay to come down later, but he won't make it for YouTube. That's okay. I didn't promise that he was going to be here because I knew it would be close. He is working on a saddle, uh, doing leather working. Somebody wanted Viking motifs and contacted the village, and so now he's doing that. Uh, chilly Denver, where R.K. Hagman is. Uh, and then Karin Hollick has 17 in Celsius in Phoenix. Holy crap. That's summer. Um, Maria says it's still, it's darker in uh, there in Denmark, but it's light outside here. The snow helps a lot. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, see, they think a sift, uh, have to put there. You can, they can't hear you, but I like a little metal tip there. I think would be kind of cool. I don't know if it's just like a cone or how they do it, but let's see. So I did TikTok for the first time. I used to just use TikTok to spy on my children. Don't tell them that. They'll probably log in later and find out anyway, but nah, just to see 
uh, what they're up to. Uh, but also they, um, I did a little video to show the last stitches going in. And Bonnie's here, Aunt Bonnie's here. She'll send us some snow, it's gloomy and they're waiting for rain. I'll take snow over rain any day. So we can turn. So do we caption the photo of you? You know the photo, show, show the pose, do the pose. What were you doing? I don't remember which one you used. You were kind of doing the fiddler on the roof, ya tev, tev ya. la 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 la. That one. Okay, caption that. <laughs> Come and give us a hug. I don't know. <laughs> There's got to be a good one to have on there. Oops. I have to turn the camera so you don't see that I'm looking over my glasses to read chat. There's a metal tip fine in Birka, maybe from a hat. That's the one. I knew there was. But somebody makes those hats and puts tips on them. I was wondering where I was getting that from. So there. Good. Okay. And we just have to find somebody who makes them. Oh yeah, we had a tour this morning, so some of the houses are open. This is where Runa and Heidi live when they're in the village. Never done TikTok. No, I kind of, yeah, you're wildly impressed that TikTok became, yeah, my kids are huge into it. Suddenly it became the home of Sea Shanty Joy last year, yeah. It's, uh, oh, and free Viking hugs. That's a good caption for that picture, free Viking hugs. <laughs> no, I, uh, I liked the way that you can make these quick little, you can make a little video and you can speed it up. And so I thought, well, I'll use the platform to try. So all the weapons are stored in here right now, but that's where Runa and Heidi live. Also, um, it turns out that the chickens find it very romantic in there. <laughs> What's the story behind that, Carl? Why um, do they choose it, his it house? It was one particular day. First, I uh, chased out the old rooster and one of the hens. Yeah. And then the young rooster and one of the hens. A little bit later, the old rooster and the young rooster. <laughs> Something's going on in that house. Oh, but we have to show you. I have to show this too. I can turn it around without making anybody sick there. So Georg thought, we made it a way out. <laughs> Do you know what that says? I remember Runa and Heidi live on this street. <laughs> See if anyone could figure that one out. Actually, did he spell that right? I wouldn't argue with Georg over it. Uh, it seems to be missing a letter, but I thought maybe he, I don't know if he did it in I think there's not supposed to be every, two more letters on this word. Not every modern letter has a rune equivalent. Huh. And that one is a th sound, I think. Yeah. Okay, does anybody figure out what it is? Come on, baby, get some love. That's a good, <laughs> good caption. <laughs> you know, I couldn't help it. When I looked at that picture, all I could think of was come and check out the size of my scram sacks. <laughs> Show them your scram sex, Carl. <laughs> I'll turn it around again, sorry. Would you like to check out the size of my weapons? Do the pose again. You're so good. There you go. <laughs> That's too good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Heidi's got it completely correct. She's a Charlie Hedvian. So yeah, I would thought it was supposed to be lover's lane, but it looks like it says love. And then I'm not sure that's lane, but it depends on the sound. But yeah, it's supposed to be lover's lane, because apparently they're moving, or uh, Heidi has a house now on Charlie Hitzvayan or something like that. So then um, we thought, well, this isn't fair. Carl and I have to compete with this shit. So <laughs> should we go show him the sign on our, we have to show the sign on our road. By the way, Viking toilet. We're getting ready for blue here. <laughs> and my embroidery that uh, somebody markered last year, so I'll have to wring somebody's neck. Uh, Georg is not supposed to have red hair, orange hair, it's supposed to be white. But anyway, that was my toilet sign. We have to fix it all up for the new season yet. Okay, so there's a sign over here. Oh, and there's a sheep wanting to play. He 
You want to come out? Should we let him out a little bit with us to the chickens? You want you... me to feed them, so like you can talk to your... Uh, yeah, I could do that. Fans. My growing fans, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you think this says? Now remember, it's Carl and I that live in, not that house, but this house when we're staying in the village, which is the textile house. It's a little cold right now, as you can see, uh, but it's not called, uh, it's not called textile road. Okay, who can figure out what that says? This is in English, of course, this one. And I'll catch up on chat while you have a look at that and some sheep's butt. Drea says, good morning from Minnesota. Roads and everything else are covered with a layer of ice at the moment. I'm trying to get to go on my daily walk. Ah, uh, it's tricky. I uh, tried to pull into a parking spot here that has a, a thick layer of snow and I thought, ah, I should be able to get through it now, but the snow is so hard. I actually got my front tire stuck and had to come back earlier. Okay, does anybody know what that says? Ron is knitting a moss stitch call. Oh, cool. In a mix with red and black hand spun. Um, trying to uh, trying to learn the spindle in opposite hand early arthritis stinks. Oh, I agree. I get a sore finger every now and then, but that's why I do more null binding than knitting because it's easier to hold on to the needles. Okay, last chance. Think of Carl. Carl is a drauger. And look at how he walks. <laughs> It says creepy street because <laughs> he's kind of creepy. I'm going to engrave that on your, ep I'm going to put that on your epitaph when you die. Here lies Carl. He was kind of creepy. <laughs> ah, Torben's here. Carl the hug me Viking. I told you he's a snuggler. I'm ruining his reputation. Do you want to take him on or do you want to go in there? Yeah, it might be a pain in the butt trying to get him back in again after. So if you haven't met our sheep before, that's... Well, now they're going inside because they think he's going to feed him in the, in the little house there. That is Grotas. He is, which means the gray one, but he's gone kind of white over the years and now a little bit brown. And Svartin, which is his brother from another mother. He uh, is hiding behind Carl now, but he's... Um, well, Svartin means blacky and he's kind of going gray. Oh, they're gonna, are they gonna headbutt you again? Do you remember last year when we were doing, I think it's about a year ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago? You're gonna get an icicle in your head. <laughs> he got, um, a sheep came and rammed him in the side. <laughs> not, for, fortunately, not too hard, but it was kind of funny in the middle of YouTube because the sheep wanted attention. So these guys are Old Norwegian Shortail Land Race or Gamal Norsk Spell Sow. Oh, he's so excited. You better make sure. <laughs> Did you just stab yourself with an icicle after you called the sheep a moron? <laughs> you had that coming. Oh, they get uh, sheared once a year. These guys are about four, four and a half years old now. Actually, no, I think they turned... Let's see, we got them in 20... They're teen... They turned five this month, actually. So there you go, they got older all already. Yeah, he's the Carl the Snuggler. <laughs> Look at him snuggling that sheep. <laughs> uh, this, but they get sheared once a year, these ones. So his wool is really, really long now. You can kind of look back and you can see a, a photo of them when they're completely shaved. People think they're goats, uh, but they're not. Their horns go differently, for one. Uh, they'll get sheared. They, last year, the time they got sheared was May 31st, and they'll get sheared again around the same time this year. And they get quite a bit of wool. But their outer layer is really long and strong and is great for making sails or going lengthwise on a loom because it can support the weight of all the, the uh, weights at the bottom. And then there's short inner fiber. There's like a double layer, so there's much shorter fiber in the middle that's much softer and that's good for um, clothes or putting it widthwise in the loom. No matter what we do, he always shows you his butt. <laughs> but they're really cool, yeah. Uh, so these guys are fixed, so they're maybe not as much of a ram as they used to be, but um, they're perfectly happy here. They have like free reign behind all these houses here and my, um, over by me as well. So they can kind of run around where they want, and then in the evenings we let them run around the rest of the village, but we have to keep them off the woad. Uh, this is the longest we've had woad survive. It depends if it comes up again this year. Um, 
because they keep eating. It's the first thing they go to. It's like they know we're trying to grow woad. Yeah, and then they try to eat it. And indigo this year too. But uh, so far they haven't touched it. So if it comes up this year, then we'll have, we might actually have one year old woad instead of brand new. The sheep are awesome. Uh, Carl exposing his scram sacks live on YouTube was something I expected for this Saturday. <laughs> are you going to expose your scram sacks, Carl? Uh, let me feed the sheep first. He says, ah, oh, let him feed the sheep first. Yeah, they head butted you last time, didn't they? <laughs> when you exposed your scram sacks. <laughs> scram sacks. Uh. Uh, Barber, EJBW, Barber says, uh, weathers grow the best wool. Ah, so I'm not actually, this is probably the only time I've ever in my life been up close to sheep. Hi, you going to say hi? Sometimes they think the gimbal is food, but he's not falling for that trick. <laughs> we have a little bit of modern amenities because, uh, the little electric fence there, so they don't jump over. Those guys are very good jumpers. Um, before we had those put in, we found them shopping at, uh, the grocery, they were shopping at the gas station. <laughs> so the gas station called them us and said, I think your sheep got loose. So, unfortunately, we have to make a little modern adaption of having the, the, um, electric up so that they don't, uh, they don't run off. How many, okay, here's a quiz trivia question for you. How many sheep do you need to make a Viking sail? And when uh, we're talking, what kind of ship are we talking, Carl? Like a proper ship or just a small boat with a sail? Uh, 100 square meters, 10 by 10. So a pretty big, uh, pretty big sail. How many sheep do you need? This is according to Neil Price. <laughs> well, according to Neil Price's source anyway. And then a follow-up question. How many man hours would it take to go from sheep to a finished sail of that size. 100 square meters, 10 by 10 meters in wool. Just a simple uh, um, two shaft weaving. Let's see who knows the answer to that. He got some time because I'm gonna make Carl answer it and he's still got his head in the sheep. We have a guess of 500 sheep and six months. So when we refer to man hours, it's like, okay, uh, regular work week is what, 37 and a half hours to 40 hours? So would it take you a week? Then there you got 40 hours right there. Yanny Erickson said, had a summer job at a petting zoo once and half my time was spent chasing escapee goats. I would have liked to learn an electric fence. Yeah, so he understands. Oh, and then they got new hay. So here's another thing. Our entire village is not enough grass to feed those sheep, so we actually have to bring in hay. They eat a lot. You're not getting head-butted today? No. And you didn't whack your head? I always hit my head on that. <laughs> the roof when I come out. I smack my head on there every time. I think I've got a permanent lump. Okay, do we have any more guesses on the sheep? On the wool? How many sheep and how many man-hours does it take to make a sale? Drea's going to win by default if no one else challenges her. <laughs> Come here. Do you want to pet? No, they don't want to pet. They're busy eating. Then we have to go and feed the chickens after this and see how many eggs. Do you want to snuggle my hand? I don't have any food. So his brother is the greedy one. He takes all the food. So we have to kind of sneak some to this guy. But he does get a fair amount too, though. You can see he's been eating. See if we get the other one over there. Do you have any hints, Carl, on your trivia? It's hard to give hints when you're looking for numbers. Yeah. Well, my hint was Neil Price. So if they're quick with Google, maybe they can find it. Yeah, I don't think Neil Price is the source for this. He no. talked about it, but I think we found No, something. he's not the source. It's He's the one that wrote it in his book, but it's I based on... I don't think, yeah. I think he was talking about... I don't know. He might have. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Dinner time. 
I've rarely seen them be that enthusiastic about the hay. It's usually the pellets that gets them oh, the excited. Pellets are candy. Yeah. How much hay do you think they eat in a week? Uh, How many stacks do we go through? Also bales of hay, not the big balls, but the I would bales. Say a little bit more than one of the bales that we can barely carry here. Yeah, I was going to say, I know they go through at least one, but... Normally, they are stacked in such a way that you take like a sheet of hay that is you about turn like it. this. Just a minute there, then they can hear you. About like that, yeah. About like the, that But then that's to and here then, and to here. Uh, uh, about a square meter. Uh, but today it was too dark mm. in there for me to see where the threads were and it was tied up. Oh. So I just had to take out handful after handful and then just kind of estimate. You and had it a was kind of sex. difficult to estimate because I have this dickhead eating it as soon as I put <laughs> it down. The gray so, one? Yeah. But that's because he's hungry and his brother's stealing all the food. So hurry it up. <laughs> now he stole all the foggy food from his brother when it came to the pellets, so I had to hand feed his brother in the end. Yeah. I think we had another one in there. Let's see. Uh, how many spinners would be needed for the yarn for that sale? Uh, fleece weighs about four pounds. One fleece weighs four pounds. I... Okay, so take a look at this. Okay, if you remember all the wool that was hanging on, that's just one of them. And I think I got maybe through half of his wool. And it's not all spun up or anything. It's uh, it's some of it is spun, but uh, and used. But I'm still in. It's still in the washing <laughs> phase yeah, and stuff. And I also suspect that their fleeces are heavier than four pounds. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. We should have weighed it, but we didn't have a scale big enough. Uh, I'll come to think of like it. Two kilograms. I would say it's more, but it's uh, kind of hard to uh, ju uh, to judge. Yeah. Uh, Yenny says, I wish Viking, quote unquote, Viking documentaries spent more time, oops, I got a little thing in the way here, spent more time, uh, exploring the logistics and everyday life of the Viking age and less showing warriors in weird leather armor, storming shores and shouting. And of course she's got support there. And I completely agree. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I liked that book of Ash and Elm, because yeah. they talk no, a lot more about that. If they did that, I would actually sit silently and watch documentaries instead of screaming at them. <laughs> So Rhonda's guessing 40 fleeces. What do you think? Do you want to let him off the hook and tell him? Yeah. Now, uh, the first estimate was a little bit over when it mm. came to sheep and far under when it comes to work hours. Yeah. So. Uh, for uh, a, ten, a 10 by 10 sale, you need a uh, wool of 200 of these guys. Mm. And then it is about nine work years to... Yeah. Uh, for uh, one, one person, if they worked for nine years straight, Yeah. it would take. So if anybody is wondering why they had multiple wives in the Viking Age. <laughs> why can't the men learn how to weave? <laughs> because you can have multiple wives. Why would you? Okay, so we had to move in the modern houses in the village because the, um, the uh, hotel staff is starting to come back for the year, etc. So we had to switch from the house that we're in, the modern house that we're in, to a different one. And it doesn't have a dishwasher. And Carl, what was your smart-ass re-answer to that? <laughs> Like, Carl, you don't have a dishwasher. And you're like, what did you say? That's okay. Why? I don't care. I have a girlfriend. Not for long. <laughs> I have a girlfriend. My dad used to make, or my stepdad, I mean, used to make a joke about uh, this. It was kind of funny. He's like, I don't need a dishwasher. I already have one. She's over there. <laughs> that was so bad. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> Chauvinistic pig jokes and... <laughs> Uh, was 40 sheep and, no, did you say 40 sheep? How many sheep did you say it was? I'm not that correct. Yeah, 200 sheep and, and nine years of man hours. Woman hours. Not woman hours, you <laughs> dick. God, you are just inside. <laughs> Somebody help me smack him. Okay, now remember that picture in the beginning? <laughs> Recaption that picture. <laughs> uh, I'll put you behind the camera so they can hear you though. Okay, let's see if they want to agree. Oh, Maria's off. Bye, Maria. Uh, they said, wow, of course. Um, me too, Carl. Less screaming, more watching. Yeah. So there we go. We learned something new. Whoops, I was off by a factor of five. Yep, yeah, but you were there pretty close. 
I was surprised it took that many too. I would have guessed something like 20 sheep and I would have thought that would have uh, been high. Not everything becomes, uh, when you think about uh, basically cradle to grab, uh, yeah. from wool to spinning mm. it into thread to uh, uh, mm. uh, yeah, it's just weaving left up, right? Yeah. This is your fit. Women's work. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the woad. So the wood and the indigo they haven't touched. It's basically uh, the logistics of being a Viking rider. Uh, to even become a Viking rider, to even sc run screaming up the beaches of uh, Lindisfarne. Yeah. You need a fuckload of women and sheep. <laughs> um, <laughs> the use of the word fuckload. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Welsh. <laughs> no, okay. All right, I'll show you that. Okay, so that was the indigo and the woad, and hopefully that will come back this year. This, uh, okay, so this is the house we live in. There's some of the wool I spun last year. If I go any closer, it'll get darker, but it's actually lighter on camera than it is uh, in real. But that's some of the wool, but I took every color they had. Um, some, this isn't all our sheep. I took some other ones, if Carl holds it like that, and it shows up maybe a little bit better in the light, yeah. This was the, because we also have some, a lot of wool that's been donated to us by uh, the local farmers uh, because they would just chuck it in the woods, but we want it. Uh, so our freemen, uh, they, when they come here, they can also just take some. So this is our sheep here for the most part, the gray and the, let's see if I can get that there. That's actually Svartan. He's not looking very black anymore. Uh, and then this is, this is Grotas here, the light one. Um, but we also had brown sheep nearby and it comes out like that and black sheep so here's the trivia for you green to me. you're colorblind no, no it's probably because you're holding it next to your green tunic it's not green it's black even well okay but so a black sheep is never truly black no, they're, green. they're not green <laughs> carl can't see no, anyway, but that's uh, to show. I mean, I think in order to get purely black off of a bla uh, black sheep or one that appears very black, you would need, um, it had to be less than two months old. They just start getting lighter. So put that back there on the house. And the loom. Do you know how wide the looms would be for this? I can't remember if that was in that. Uh, yeah. You can either do it on one loom if you only have one woman to do it for you. But, <laughs> he says you can uh, do it on one loom if you only have one woman to do it for you. You have to come over here, they can't hear you yes, in the front. But then you also have to spend the next nine years just uh, listening to her bitch about your sale. So uh, I would suggest putting more women on more looms. So she don't have to listen to <laughs> six feet under and I can still hear her complain. <laughs> God. <laughs> That was a Guns N' Roses song. I used to love her, but I had to kill her. Uh, but anyway, this thing can go as wide as the loom allows this way. But you can see it rolls up. Uh, it gets, it, you turn the crank and you roll it higher and higher. So you can go as long as you want on it. And then you can actually do like a, if you have a really wide one anyway, and then just go long, 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 you can actually cut it off at the length you want and then just sew the pieces on. So you don't have to rewarp that thing every time. I think it took a week to set up one loom like this. Yeah. It takes a long time. That's the worst part. And then the weaving goes kind of quicker. Uh, and also if you're using the uh, product for uh, either a sail or a, uh, a tent cloth, you would probably want to rub it in sheep fat. We also use linseed oil actually on it, but does that work for the, f that we just use to keep the fibers from sticking together. I don't know how well you can see uh, that here, but. They'll stick together here a little bit every time we move it in and out. Yeah, no, but uh, that's, you would do that with the finished products to basically waterproof it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I don't think linseed oil would work because mm. uh, considering how uh, uh, sheep fat smells yeah. and when it's been in the sun for a couple of weeks, the, I'm sure everybody, if the linseed oil had worked, I think everybody would just have used that. Because yeah. Being inside the Viking Tantra that has uh, reasonably, uh, that have uh, been prepared this way, uh, it very much smells like being inside of a dead sheep. 
Oof, no, we don't want to have it inside a dead sheep. This is uh, tourist woven, by the way, so if the quality isn't good, you know, some of the threads are a little fat. That's because we let them play with it. Um, I have actually not done much weaving on that because I don't want to set it up again. <gasps> Torben, you're on my side. How many corals? How many corals does it take to do the dishes? Well, Torben, you've had um, a kitchen. You have been in a kitchen with me before. Uh, <laughs> Stand further out. You're in the dark. <laughs> yeah. I would say. Well, one to bitch about it. Well, the, the, one to try to get somebody else to do it for you. I'm not really that bad at bitching about it. No, you just break dishes until we don't let you do it no, anymore, thinking, oh, I'm so smart. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> really. I use like one fork a week. Usually no plates. And it takes me like eight months to run out of dishes. <laughs> you had two dishes when I came back and a fork. Mm. Two forks. Two forks. You're a... Was it two forks? Yeah, you're getting a little lavish in your old age. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good question, Torben. Keep them coming. <laughs> okay, so we'll uh now we have to feed the chickens. So you're kind of we're kind of working while we do this today. Uh there we go. Uh Torben says one to do the dishes, 17 to bitch about it. I was being nice <laughs> when I said one. And break some plates, and maybe one more to ask for the recipe for the dish. Washer. <laughs> no, for the dish water. <laughs> That's even better. I misread that. The recipe for the dish water. <laughs> oh, Torben, you are so hired. Uh, and one to beat over the head with by Karen. <laughs> Look. He's not just red because he's cold. He's in trouble. <laughs> Let's see. So there's our gas station. If you get hungry and you don't want to kill your own food, if you just go right over that wall, all you have to do is wave a plastic card and they give it to you, pre-packaged and cut and everything, <laughs> killed. <laughs> but I have to point out that uh, Turban isn't really a kitchen wizard either. No? Uh, is he not? Do you agree with that, uh, Karin? <laughs> we uh, once tried to make inharad sod at school when we had to either run, we had either had to run around like maniacs or make food. Yeah. You basically had to, uh, you either had to have PE or uh, cooking. We chose cooking because free food is better than working your ass off. <laughs> uh, the problem is that we have to make the food, so the quality was kind of debatable. I gotta say, it really bugs the crap out of me that the kayak center with a pretty grass roof chose to put a window on this side. Because it looks like a Viking house in our village has a grass and a glass roof. <laughs> but that's a kayak center. If you saw it last week. So. Okay, let's see what else he missed. That was Morton, he says. <laughs> yeah, let's blame him. <laughs> Kiwi did plant dyeing for the first time today. It was so fun. Oh, cool. What did you use? And uh, what color did you get? And did you get the color you wanted to get? Garcia's got a good question. I'll get back to it in a minute. Um, along all these walls, we get stinging nettles, especially back there and up on the hill behind us. Those ones I will put, if I put them in a copper pot, I can get yellow. Uh, but for the most part, I just get green. But I like the green. And then if you twist the yarn, well, you have to mordant the yarn, but if you twist it up and leave it in the pot, not too tight, um, kind of like you get some different color shades. There, because they, uh, this incentivizes non-paying customers. Yep. It does, actually. It, um, it's a very natural deterrent. Rather than having barbed wire up on the top or electric fence, we can just have stinging nettles and people don't want to climb through it. So there's still one or two places where they try over by the diner. But, but also, it's growing so close to the back of the chicken coop here that they don't want to go back and try to get into the chicken house. Oh, well, she used blueberries. Uh, blueberry bushes, blobar ling. Uh, and it turned out a golden yellow. Oh, cool. I tried to color with blueberries once, and it, but the, the pretty color of it, uh, that was one of the first times I tried. You want to go into the chickens or you want me to be No, them? you just have to go in. All right, here's the next trivia question before I ask, ask uh, and we'll take Garcia's question after. Remind me about that. How many eggs will he come out with? How many hens do we have? We have about 22 hens. 
one rooster now. Unfortunately, a hawk got the other one, but that was the one that would have been leading to uh, um, inbred chickens if we kept them too long anyway. Uh, but uh, actually, it was an eagle, I think. So how many eggs will he come out with? We have uh, three teenagers in there now and about nine miracle babies. The teenagers and the kids are near miracle. Um, they snuck inside there. It's like a bunch of uh, boxes for them to sit in, but they went underneath with a space of about this much, got underneath there and managed to birth some babies under there. It takes 21 days for the eggs to, to, uh, to go from egg to chick. There's a red light in there now because they need some heat. But right now they've kind of called it a night. Oh, that's kind of a cool little silhouette. Hi, there's one of the teenagers. Oh, she's getting so big. Well, we don't know if it's he or she yet until they get a comb on their head. I don't know if you can hear him in there. If I turn it around, you can maybe. That's Carl's legs. <laughs> So how many eggs do you think he finds? It's a little different each time, but I gotta say they have been producing a bit lately, so Carl and I are having omelets every day. <laughs> Although today, we decided to have them sunny side up with pork and beans. <laughs> Was it Holger and somebody else who built this? I like this chicken coop. Oops, I'm tripping. I wanted to build a cage like this for my indoor cats so they could just kind of run around but uh, I'd have to have help to do it. But it's just sticks going this way and then some in the middle to hold it. Let's see, okay, Carl, so we have it. Uh, Torben says he doesn't think you're gonna find crap, but that's because we know it's Carl that's looking for them. Uh, he doesn't look hard enough. Uh, you have to go under the hens that are laying on them too. You gotta take those two. <laughs> because uh, 21 days later, we'll have more chickens than we need. Yenny thinks there's going to be five, Dreyas is eight, or, I mean nine, Kivis is three, Karin Hollux is twelve, Torben says maybe one whole one, that's pure dumb luck. Oh, they could hear the chicks, so that's great. Make French toast or a toad in the hole. I like French toast. I did actually make that a while ago. That's a good one. Toad in the hole, that's the one where you take like a, a cup and then um, put it on top of the, or a glass put it on top of the bread and just kind of turn it so it makes it take a hole out and then you put the egg in there. Is that what you're calling a toad in the hole? Because I just didn't know what that's called, but that's actually really good. How many eggs do you need for whipped cream, Carl? How many? Well, there's something in here. How many eggs do you need for whipped cream, Carl? How many, says Torben? Well, there's the rooster. I think he's trying to count eggs. He's being very, uh, well, he's feeding them too. He's got, well, they've got some chicken food that they get in there too. Did you know this? I actually never knew until we started getting those chickens. I can maybe put them here. Um, we take the shells, we don't throw them away. Uh, and then we let them dry out, put them in a jar, crush them all up. And then we give them back to them and they eat it. Uh, the mothers use it for um, fulcetic, a uh, fulcetic, was it fol folic acid to make more eggs? I didn't know they actually ate the eggshells. And the other thing is, if an egg breaks, it's not a bad thing. Uh, they will eat the whole thing. They get protein that way too, but... So they're kind of cannibals, these guys. Let's see. All right, I think he's coming out soon, so we're gonna have to decide if we're right or not. I'm gonna guess you got uh, 18 eggs. I'm gonna be really bold. <laughs> Carl, you asked Torben how many eggs you need for whipped cream? Do you know the definition of whipped cream? It's cream that you whip. I like it. Yenny says, I think if Carl and Torben are cooking, I'll just go to the gas station. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so the this is actually nettles, these sticks here. You can see how long they get. Um... And they uh, stick all the way out to the steps. I'll show you the fjord while we're waiting for him to come out, though. Because this is the one place in, from the village you can see the fjord. Da -da -da -da. Spring is coming. 
Let's make a show out of it. Carl and Torben make food dishes. Oh, definitely. I did actually check out your podcast, uh, Torben. It was called uh, Quarantena Pils, which means uh, quarantine beer. That was kind of funny. Um, I heard you. I like the. I only. I've only had time to really listen to the first one yet because my kids have been uh, monopolizing the station lately. But I like that you insulted a lady on accident. And she came in and gave you a what for, <laughs> and that the radio station you were at. I would have done that. Nettle fabric is incredibly soft. Are Brahma Han and Harfra? Yes, that's that. That hen is okay. I mean, that chick, that rooster is okay. It was the old one, the one we had to be replaced. We uh, were only supposed to have one rooster, which was the one from up there, uh, up where Heidi is, uh, the new one. And the other two were supposed to go because there's a bigger chance of inbreeding. Any new chicks would be could be inbred. Um, but the one of them got kind of away. He managed to elude the axe. So um, Wendy ended up with two roosters. But an eagle came down and got him. I think it was an eagle or a hawk that got him uh, probably about two months ago. But the the newest one is still here. So, um, you know, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be, I guess. He did leave a bit longer than he was supposed to. Did anybody guess eggs? Yep, we got a plenty of guesses. We got five, nine, 12. I'm guessing 18. Torben says none. He thinks you're going to break them. I'll come down and you can... I broke one. You broke one. <laughs> okay. I'll come out so you can see, though. You have to come away over here, Carl. By the gods. <laughs> Okay, how many did you get? Oh, he's still trying to shut the door. You have to kind of like push the door in really hard with your ass uh, and to get the hook to stick. Oh, but Carl doesn't have an ass, so this could take him some time. <laughs> this is one thing where large hips and a butt really does come in handy. Okay. Oh, you got to come all the way out. You're getting darker. I know how many because I counted them. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I think that looks a little bit more than five. How many did you get? Uh, I dropped one, so here is 27. 27 and you dropped one? Yeah, and the chickens also destroyed like three or four that I just threw out. Yeah, they do that though. Sometimes they just want to eat an egg yolk, so they do. 27? So basically 28 if we're... It doesn't... So I was closer with... The, yes, eggsies. So we're having... um. Either somebody didn't pick them up yesterday, but I know Runa was in there and did, so that can't be. You gotta come out though, you're in like a shadow. Are you sure about that? Because their water was really dirty and the same with the two. No, he was there, hi son. But they like to scoop their crap in there. Yeah, I've been doing that enthusiastically. Yep. That, you can make a lot of whipped cream with those eggs, Carl. <laughs> I like Yenny, she's gonna come and visit soon. <laughs> You can make a lot of whipped cream with 27 eggs, huh? <laughs> How many eggs do you need for whipped cream? That's one of the two things that Mike Turban gave up on me when it came to food. <laughs> he bought those at Yoker, he said. That's why he was gone so long. You went over to the gas station and bought the eggs. Do they have stamps on them? No. Look at you, you kind of look like, wait. Do that again, look at the eggs. It's like a proud papa moment. <laughs> I know, horrible. We're at minute 43. We can go in the shop now and it's because it's getting dark. And then we can figure out who won the hat. By the way, if you guys want to, last chance to be in on the drawing for the hat, write your name and write it in chat that you want me to put you in there. I put it on um, Instagram, but I only I think I didn't get it up there until like Thursday. So, oh, I thought I heard ice cracking up there, but I don't see any. No, the waterfall cracked and dropped down uh, up there. It cracked a bit from there and fell down a layer yesterday night. Papa Carl with his chicks. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you can see it's getting dark now. You can see? You can't see you even. Your hair's too dark. No, it's darker on the screen than it is in reality. No, it's hard to see you. 
<laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, good. <laughs> Proud Papa Carl in the in his chicks uh, says uh, Torben and Yenny chimes in that he's gonna eat. <laughs> that's, that's just sick. I agree with you. Ah, uh, you know, but if you're hungry and you make bread. Oh, did you make bread? Oh wait, no. Uh, Karin, Karin says uh, he can make his own food, but all would have to make all the meals with fish. And he makes bread. Would you like to comment on this, Carl? I know about the fish that you were. Uh... Uh, I don't get the bread reference either. Did you make bread? Maybe I... you bought it in the store and they thought you did? I can't remember having done that in Songdal at least. Yeah? But how do you make fish? Because I keep asking you to help me. How do we make this fish? Your father sends us home from Selya with fish. And they're huge. Uh, you can fillet it quite well. Ah. But how do we cook it? And the only way you know how to do it is one way. Uh, there are multiple things you can do, but if you first make a fillet or fry it, there isn't really that many options. No, but you had another one that actually turned out really good. You were quite proud of it with the foil. Yeah, no, uh, if you just make uh, fillet sort of mackerel or whatever, you wrap them in uh, aluminium foil and you take whatever you find in the refrigerator. Uh, garlic, butter, uh, mayonnaise works fine. Yeah, mayonnaise. Uh, mustard, <laughs> candy, that sort of thing doesn't work as fine, but uh, feel free to experiment. <laughs> You've tried that? What about the uh, herring? You throw herring in there? We've got some of that in the fridge right now. Uh, you totally could. <laughs> But I wouldn't be frying that in the first place. No? Okay, this was funny. Um, uh, there should be an eye in there. I make the fish. Ah, okay. And then Torben says, because I need the dough. <laughs> <laughs> I need dough too. Smoked salmon and smoked herring is delicious. Oh, and while we're on the topic of food, um, Garcia had a really good question up here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We actually get this question quite often in the store. Sorry, I'm breathing really heavy into the phone while I scroll. What kind of cutlery did the Vikings have, Carl? Uh, I don't think, I don't think they were big into cutlery. No? There is some uh, fork with two spikes on it that we call a Viking fork nowadays. And I do believe it's based on finds, but I don't think it is something they commonly used. And when they used it, they probably used it more as uh, something to hold something with while you fry it in flames or over the fire than something that they would uh, uh, use as we use a fork. Yeah. So there were some more uh, comments in there. Audrey's here. Gravlocks. Uh, spoons <laughs> are pretty co a pretty common find from basically every culture. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Everybody would carry knives, but whether they use them for food or if they are too full of uh, the entrails of their enemies to be hygienic, <laughs> uh, God knows. Too full of the entrails of their enemies. Sounds like the chickens. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to the rooster. Maybe it wasn't a hawk or an eagle. Okay, we're going in, so we'll go selfie. Remember the what? The ice? Oh yeah, no, there's a big ice field. ice field. There's a, oh, they can't see crap now. Under the icicles, there's like a big pile of ice that sticks to the rock. So we will head into the shop where we have some light and some warmth. Carl will probably catch up because he's got 27 eggs to deal with. <laughs> and I'll catch up on the chat. Ah, oh, that's what we look like. We're in the modern world now. Should we put him down and see if it actually is 27 eggs? Just to see. <laughs> I'm doubting your counting abilities. I've seen your dishwashing abilities. Okay, so these are, there. <laughs> okay, so these are eggs from previous. These were from the 2nd of March. There's a little bit left. But look at this smart ass. These eggs are from the 8th of March in 1816. <laughs> in the year of 1816. So they're Women's Day eggs because, you know, it's March 5th today. All right. You can probably put them in the... 
containers here. There we go. Okay, and I'll read chat here to catch up. Uh, Adrian says, I can't wait for April. I'll finally be able to rest after passing hopefully three courses, Todd, over eight weeks. I heard you did. You finished. So that's good, but you caught them all, hopefully. Yeah, you, you passed them. I know you remember you said you finished that you um, took them. Crap, that's a lot of work. I do not miss being a student. Uh, crispy salmon with sriracha sauce and lemon juice. That sounds actually really good. That's 12. Gravlax, gravlax, they're good. They're healthy. Any but I agree completely. Gravlox is what do you call that buried salmon? <laughs> what do you say? Grav uh, oh, gravlox in English. Uh, I'm gonna put this down. My arm's getting tired. One of the red food episodes. Uh, Did we? Yeah. Uh, it has an English name. Uh, there. Oh, the rest of my arm. It's not fermented fish, but it's something like that. Yeah. You're gonna need a new container if you've got more than 20. If you have 27 now, you can use the other uh, bowl. More than 24 eggs. No, 27. <laughs> More than... Read what I'm thinking and not what I'm actually saying. My lips don't work right now. It's cold. <laughs> it was cold out there. Uh, do the Vikings raise ducks too? Oh, I saw the ducks. The, the Canadian geese are back now. And the swans have additions to their families. So do they raise ducks? I don't know. Uh... You know, mallards are, mallards are around here. They're so uh, easy to hunt that I don't know if they would have bothered. Yeah. That's 24, 25, 26. Oh, Albert's here. He was visiting family. 27? <gasps> he counted! Okay, and what's left in there? <laughs> I don't know how he gets holes in his clothes. I might have to clean the flimmer room now. Yeah, you might have to clean the flimmer I'm going to spectacularly watch. How about those beautiful flowers behind you? Are you responsible, Toad, for the tulips? What the hell would I be responsible <laughs> If you see tulips, <laughs> you can, can know with certainty that I have nothing to do with it. No, if I you... I would look for a Dutch sub, uh, suspect. <laughs> now I have you would a, look for a Dutch suspect? Yes, I have a <laughs> weird relationship to tulips. <laughs> they do. The Dutch have a weird relationship to tulips, I have to agree. Uh, just a sec here. Uh, how many chickens do we have? Uh, I think it was like 20... Well, last count was 22 hens, but we got about... Uh, we have three teenagers and a new batch of nine. They don't all survive. Uh, uh, no, some of them like to like commit between, suicide. Between uh, uh, chicken hawks and uh, yeah. unauthorized reproduction, <laughs> we are getting new ones and we are losing them yeah. faster than we can keep track There's of. like a ledge where they can stand on and sometimes the young ones will go over. Uh, they get really super excited, so they jump like over the thing and then they can't get back up again or they'll fall back down or something like that. So we call that uh, chicken suicide. And then the other chickens... <laughs> They just go and hack it to pieces and eat it. It's the cannibals. Uh, okay, let's see. Gravlox is raw salt cured salmonella. <laughs> um, not salmonella, damn it. I like salmonella. <laughs> I was a little curious there if I run into this. I'm like, okay, she must know what she's talking about. She's Swedish. Uh, Alps says, I am a godfather now. Oh, congratulations. I'm not even a godmother. But I'm a mom, that'll do. Okay, we're going in the shop. We're at uh, minute 53, so uh, who am I putting in here on the chat? Let's see, oh, I can see myself on the screen over there. There, we're in the... So who am I putting in for a hat here now? I will enter it. We'll give you all a bonus name anyway. Just grabbing my keyboard. Oh, there you go. Carl's got something up his sleeve over there. Remember, if you're in front of the camera, you got to talk louder. Um, but done wrong, it might lead to salmonella. <laughs> I guess you're right. Uh, salmonella would be correct than you think, actually. Says Torben. Um, do we have any new books in the store? Adrian wants to know. We have gotten a few. We're going to be ordering again, though, just before the season starts. So if you have any requests. Hat days, says Victoria. Yep. The hat will be my doom. Okay. Uh, right now I have, I think we have like 61 entries here. See, I see Victoria, but Victoria, you're here today, so I'll add another on you. 
And Torben is here. We'll give you another name in there. You can see what I'm doing here while Carl plays. And wrong way, that way. So Torben is here, Yen is here. Uh, that says Jennifer, my fingers are cold. Yenny, Eriksson, and I saw Karin Berva was here. Who else do we have in here that wants to join in on the hat thing if I didn't get you? Drea! Drea, actually, yeah, that'll do. Uh, in UK, Gravelax often has layered salt and herbs. Oh, cool. So we put Albert in the drawing. And Adrian. I don't even know what I'm drawing, maybe, but they will. Who else am I missing? We'll get everybody in the chat here in the last numbers. Mm. Karin, I got you. Kiwi. Add you. Heidi will add you. Heidi, Lisa, we should put that, just two of you guys. Um, of course, if you're not active in the chat, I can't tell if you're online or not, it just gives me a number. Garcia. Oh, I think I spelled your name wrong, but that's okay. I'm one hand typing over there. Uh, RK Hagman, that's Rhonda, I believe. It says Rinda, I can type. Now you're Rionda, I'll fix it later. And Maria was here. And did I get everyone? No, oh, there was a teepee, I liked that name. And Aunt Bonnie's in here. Arlene is here, AKA Patricia. And Karen Hollock, yeah. Or Karen Hollock, let's see. Did we get any new books, Carl? Uh, I'm not sure. You got a favorite one you want to pick out while we're still, uh, while I'm still going through scroll? Susan's here, that's right. We're gonna put Susan in there. And Lyra, of course, she got one in from uh, Instagram, but she gets uh, one for being here as well. Well, actually, two, because, uh, okay, now I got everybody in there. Okay, so we have, if I look on here, I went too far up. Total is 79 entries. Did I get everybody now if I go to the bottom of the chat? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, it is Rhonda. I keep remembering that. Okay, now we got Arlene in there. Oh, Nella's here. We need her. There we go. Lila Freed is here. Oh, hi. You're good to see you, Lila. We're putting your name in for the hat, too. Okay. I think I got everyone. So now we have this. This is how I kind of did it. So it's a total of 81 entries. Uh, some were able to enter more than once by tagging people on Instagram. Uh, I should do one quick check that there isn't any new numbers on Instagram. No. <coughs> I had to sneeze. <laughs> okay. So then I have this wonderful thing. One out of 81. It's a generator. Are you ready? Let's see who wins the hat. It is number 79. Tuck, tuck. <laughs> if you can prus it. Prus it is gesundheit. Or, we don't have a word for that in English, we just have the phrase, bless you. 79, that is, who's number 79 on here? Ah, it's an online person. Lyra, you're number 79. You get the hat. Now where we put the hat. Lyra gets the hat, complete with Carl DNA. Oh, it doesn't look like um, sick poop here anymore now. It actually looks quite like the proper color. <laughs> Congratulations, Lyra. So I'll contact you later so you don't have to put your um, details online. And we'll figure out where to send it. I will send that one. No problem. I'm not going to send it with tracking because it costs way too much, but I can send it with shipping. No problem. So it's your hat. 
I'll steam block it one more time though so it gets nice and it's been in my bag a little bit now so we have to make it nice and fresh. Lyra won the hat. Yay. Okay, did you find a book of choice? We got a couple more. One, one more minute. New and what's old, so uh, the, I don't know what of this came after Albert. Uh, I believe the book I bought probably showed up after him, but it came in one exemplar and I bought it. So, uh, you have to get your Carl DNA elsewhere, says Torben. <laughs> Maybe you can make a side bet, uh, a side deal with Lyra. This is the books I thought she was talking about last week. She's not, by the way. Uh, what she had was a red cover book, but these ones, uh, these two have sources in them. But they had a lot, I noticed the book she had had a lot of the same drawings. Uh, it's not super detailed, but on these ones you have the uh, little short bits. description down there. And then there was... Am I misremembering completely? Because well, I, there's a bunch of short books too that we have, but we ran out of those in the store. I stores. was in one of these that had like the long list at the end of the book. It might have been... That might have been the, uh, is it the other one? Or is it one it of those? Because that's Celtic, so I wouldn't. No, it's Celtic I and Old even Norse. Be it. it says Celtic and Old Norse. Oh, maybe. I can have a look. Um, or it could be the Anatomy of Viking art, but are, that's a, a little different. If I go this way. No, and this one too, just have it uh, on the bottom here. Yeah. yeah. But I noticed there were a lot of the same drawings in her book as on mine here. These have more, though. I think than hers. Yeah, no, uh, as you said, it's Viking and Celtic. So yeah, it's a little of both. But the, the descriptions are well, they're not good. To be no, they're not honest. much. It's a silver because crucifix. Because if you just write things like silver crucifix and you have that thing, yeah, I, I see it's a crucifix. I want to know where it's from. It could be a Valkyria. He's got boobs. You don't usually crucify your workers. <laughs> and I also rarely have mustache, mustaches. It could be a nose nails. ring. It could be tusks. <laughs> All based on finds with sources. Oh, which one does Yenny say? Let's see. Uh, the Anatomy of Viking Art is great. Pick up that book. She said that one has sources and it. it's the black one next to you. We have one left. Those ones we have to order more of. Those sell really well. This shows the whole over under technique and yeah, style and it of also it. goes into the types of styles yeah this is if you really want to get geeky with your uh, art uh it might have been the book i'm thinking of might have been one that greg owned privately well we had them in the store but we have to get some more of those those are there's like three skinny books they're a little bit they're shorter than that but they're uh, they're about the size of the one in your hand actually <laughs> maybe a little bit shorter but that looks a lot better yeah <laughs> I had the gimbal shadow on there, so it kind of good duck down behind Carl. But that one, yeah, it all depends on what you're kind of going for. So one, if you're just going to do embroidery and you want to trace, then those flat ones are really good. But the, the one that's a little bit thicker, the Viking anatomy, that really gets into uh, the science of it. Okay, let's see. Mindfulness for Vikings sounds interesting. Oh, we were going to get that book for Torben. I think that's the last one. Would you believe a lot of people buy those books? That is one of the newer books that we had in. Uh, but people like that stuff. Oh, Yandy liked the brown too on the hat. Crucifix and Thor's hammer, new guessing game. Okay. Do you see that one there? It looks like a crucifix, but it's, uh, you know, with a, like a face on it. I don't know if I can't get too closer, but... They're kind of supposed to look like that sometimes so that it looks like an upside down cross. Let's play, play crucifix or Taurus hammer. What do you think about that, Carl? I just don't know who is going to give you the correct answer. He doesn't know who's going to give you the correct answer. Because uh, when it comes to things like the wolf's cross, which was probably the one you were looking at over here. Yeah, I was. I'm just going to, Yenny saw a book here too. Can you flip through that one for me, Carl? The techniques of tablet weaving. This is the only tablet weaving book we have right now. Big one on the end, yeah. It's a good one though, but that one's actually not very new. It's just uh, reprinted and reprinted and reprinted, but it's really good. Yeah, it shows up on there. If I go any closer, I cast a shadow with the gimbal. Yeah, you can flip through to the patterns. It'll look like it. There you go. There's some patterns. Let's see. Oop. Collingwood is a god for tablet weaving. Oh, that's the author, isn't it, in this one? Yeah. Yeah, Peter Collingwood. Well, so these ones we have at least six of these left. 
But these ones sell pretty well too. Go towards the end where the patterns are. Yeah, so you can see there's patterns in there for people who know how to read those. Incredibly, incredibly detailed and thorough, she says. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Maybe we should, uh, well, we'll probably be able to, I'm going to turn it this way, though. Um, just got you two Viking cookbooks and Viking handbooks recently. A lot of people ask for Viking cookbooks. We haven't actually been able to find much. This one was the closest we can get, so it's not Viking, it's medieval. Yeah, well, um, if you make a Viking bowl, and it contains anything outside except for uh, ingredients, yeah. then somebody is making shit up. Yeah, and this one is... Uh, See, these are all in our web shop, by the way, so you can kind of flip through there. The shipping is ungodly right now, but if you're in Norway, it's not. It's only if you're out of sight of Norway. But uh, you can at least see what they look like or spend a lot of money on shipping if you're really desperate. We also have this one, but this one's in Swedish. A Viking etida skop, which means a, a Viking age uh, kitchen equipment. Kyrket under yngre jern ålder, samling plats och... Kunskaps herb for for um, cooking under the uh, younger Iron Age, and the let's see, can see there. This is Ingre Jarnalder. What is Ingre Jarnalder? That would young um, Iron Age is how directly. The Swedish might have some weird definition of it, but normally that would be from about uh, four hundred. Um, oh, if only we had a Swede online, Yenny. Until the Viking Age begins. We'll see what she says. Uh, yeah, but that one by Daniel Sierra. That's true. Let's see. I'll put it this way. I'm gonna sit up here. Daniel Sierra has. Uh, I had him as a neighbor in uh, Tunsberg once at a Viking market, and it smelled so good. <laughs> he was making stewed apples. That was in uh, Tunsberg a couple years ago. Okay, Carl, you can stand over here, and we'll look down judgingly. <laughs> no, I just had to put the gimbal down. Uh, she said, "Oh, Kivi recently bought a book called." Uh, Tablet Woven Treasures about Finnish Iron Age fine patterns. So good. I think I've seen that book, but we don't actually have it. Get an Early Meal by Daniel Serda. That one we have to tell Kristen to, I mean, um, Aelin to order if she can. He's from Denmark, I believe. Uh, Arlene recognizes that she has the tablet book too. Carl is right about the uh, Ingrid Jarn older then. You're right. Yeah, no, yeah, it's before the Viking Age. Viking Age is like. <laughs> No, okay. But we'll finish in the... Let's see if I push this this way. The lights are so harsh. So you can see it's cold. <laughs> anyway, but we'll... Uh, we can finish in the... If we can go in the village next weekend, we'd finish in here too because it's too dark at the end. So we can look at some more books. If you have any suggestions, you can write them in the uh, comments thing and we'll pull them out, see what he can find, make him do some homework. How many eggs does it take to make whipped cream, Carl? <laughs> 27. Okay, I'm gonna yes. go. I'm gonna go. Congratulations, one, Lira. The other one was when he was looking at me, trying to make <laughs> onions golden. Trying to make golden onions? Yeah. Oh, I, Roger's here. Take a piece of onion, put it on the plate, and it goes, and it turns black. Then it's and done? Then I go over to the onion, carve off another piece of onion, and throw it on the plate, and it goes black. <laughs> and when I've done that four or five times, I go to Turban and go, Turban, do you know how to make these things golden? Because they just turn black. Turban says, yeah, maybe you can, can maybe try to turn down the heat a little bit. And I go, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay, I feel and much better Turban about my cooking turns skills. And then says, that guy is an idiot. <laughs> I agree. Nobody's my idiot. Okay, have a good week. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you. He's just grabbed my ass. It's a win. I'll do the dishes. Okay, bye! <laughs> Saturday, Saturday.